Today, I'm in Premiere Pro and I'm looking at controlling overexposed footage and dealing with highlights, particularly on the skin, in overexposed footage and bringing them down to a more sensible level. This is TDCat.com. Yeah, so here we are in Premiere and what I wanted to show you was the, a good way of recovering this information. Now, this is this is 8-bit 420 video information, uh, so it isn't the same as working in RAW. Of course, if you were in Lightroom and you saw something like this, it would be a really simple process. You'd probably just pull down the highlight slider a bit and maybe drop the exposure, and you'd end up with a really good-looking image. You can't do that with video footage, and you certainly can't do that in Premiere. Let's take a look at the waveform monitor and see what we're dealing with here. At the moment, I've got my waveform monitor set to 8-bit, and I've got the clamp signal checkbox enabled. So what we're seeing, really, is the 16 to 235 uh, level, so what? So 8-bit basically goes from 0 up to 256 or 255, and, uh, sorry, 0 to 255, so it's 256 values. <laughs> And um, 235 is 100% uh, 100 IRE. So if we look at our values, our IRE values on this, we've got 0 to 100, which is the 16. So 0 is 16 and 100 is 235. Now, we need to be able to see a little bit more than that. So firstly, if we unclamp the signal, we can actually see that even though this section looks completely, it actually looks blown out here. It looks like we've completely destroyed this footage by intentionally overexposing it, I might add, in this instance, for the, for, you know, to enable me to do this video and how to do some experimentation on it. But there is still information there. So it's going into the kind of 235 to 255 area. You can see that quite clearly here on the waveform. And that's why it's really essential to get to know how to use the YC waveform because it's really, really useful for this type of stuff. And if we switch it to um, six, I think it's 16-bit, it calls it float within Premiere. You get a little bit more detail, and if you shove your kind of levels up, it will cater for that and will allow levels well above 255. Uh, it does remove your kind of zero, uh, zero to 255 levels here, but you get a sort of more accurate and uh, more accurate and more sort of dynamic waveform. So we'll leave it on that for now. What, so what you can see is this face area here is this section here, and it's up at 100. So how would you correct that? Well, you might immediately think that you can drop the exposure, but if we drop, just drop the exposure, well, look what happens to the rest of the image. Of course, that drops with it, and you lose... Well, it's just not going to work. All the colours start to go funny. Um, you start to get a real kind of red look around here. That's just... It just doesn't work. And, you know... You can't bring the shadows up from there too much. Maybe push them up a bit more. But now we're starting to get a kind of soft, and it's really the colors are starting to suffer by doing that. So let's just reset that. And we can't pull the highlight slider down. It's what's, well, that completely destroys it. It does nothing of any use at all, the highlight slider. Oh, just a quick note, if you are using Lumetri Color and you kind of think, oh, you're going to go down here, you can actually adjust further by using the, uh, you know, usually just 50% further by using the movement here. So even though you're at the bottom of the slider here, which is minus five, you can go a little bit further. If you're finding the sliders are a little bit limited, just an extra tip for you there. And the other thing you might sort of think to do, well, let's add a Luma curve to it and reduce the Luma the luminescence of the image. And this is a fine example, actually, of the difference between the Luma curve and the RGB curves. RGB reduces chrominance levels together with luminance levels. Luma, the Luma curve, only reduces luminance. So if we reduce this down, yes, we start to see an okay result there, but once we get to here, because our chrominance levels are being left untouched, well, not untouched, because the two aren't sort of mutually exclusive, they do kind of affect each other, but because then the chrominance levels are not being reduced in the same way as the luminance levels, you're left with a really kind of oversaturated image. Uh, and then you could back off the saturation here, but, well, that doesn't 
that's certainly not creating a particularly good looking image. Let's just drop this down separately. That's not too bad, actually. So, yeah, that's not too bad. What I found a good way of doing this is using RGB curves, so we bring that luminance level uh, and the chrominance level down together and simply drop the white point and increase the black point. So I suppose we can raise the pedestal. Uh, and if we drop the white point down like this to something reasonable, looks, does that look about right? You can see that as we drop it down, you can see the detail is still there. We haven't lost, actually lost anything. So we take it down, so skin would usually be around about 70 to 80 percent. So we can say between 70 to 80 IRE would, would, would be sort of white Caucasian skin. So we'll put it about there. And then we'll bring the black level up like this. So we're almost making a kind of sort of washed out look that we can then apply a contrast to. So, so you're left with something really quite sort of washed out like that, but we have got the detail there and the colors are still accurate. That's the main thing. And if I just go to here now and do a search, I'm kind of doing this one-handed actually, um, do a search for contrast. Just going to use the simple brightness and contrast controls and now bring this up slowly. What you'll see is that we end up with an image that has detail and the colors are retained. You can still make fine adjustments to this. You know, you can still kind of maybe, you know, increase the saturation or maybe bring it down just a little bit here. Or maybe you can change the white balance if you want to, you know, still make small adjustments. You've already made big adjustments to this image, so it might not sort of like it, like doing too much more to it. But I think you'll agree that this image that we have here now is actually pretty reasonable. It's pretty, it's very accurate colour-wise. In fact, we could probably even bring the, the whites down a little bit more on that. And if you wanted to, maybe bring the brightness up on that a little bit. There we go. We've got a contrast there. So you can't do the contrast too much because you then you'll start to lose it. But something like that... And if we go back to where we started and compare them, I think you'll find that that combination of RGB curves to create a flat look just by purely dropping the white point and increasing the black point, so creating something like this, and then adding brightness and contrast and just putting a bit of contrast on it and then making a couple of adjustments in uh, Lumetri Color if you want, creates a good image. So hang on, let me just collapse these down and show you what this look, do a sort of side-by-side -side comparison with the original. What am I doing here? Uh, okay, uh, let's turn this. Right, so that's where we started. There's our RGB curves look. Add some contrast. And make a couple of adjustments in, in uh, the main color panel. Not bad. Consider I, th I thought, I set the uh, zebras on that to basically set the whole side of the face here. In fact, most of the face was just at 100% plus. And I thought, this, this is just going to be a mess, this one. I was really impressed with how this 8-bit 420 footage regraded and allowed me to recover that pretty nicely with, uh, well, fairly accurate colors in the skin. Hope that's helpful because there are only a few ways you can do that. You, uh, in Premiere, you can play around with all sorts of methods and, and get some pretty nasty results. So hopefully that's helpful. And if you've got any thoughts or better ways to do it, or ideas or suggestions, come back to us in the comments. And if you like what we do, please subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you soon. Bye for now.